Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. Good morning. Welcome to Ask Pastor Gemma. Apostle Gemma and Apostle Vivian are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center located in Diego Martin on the Diego Martin Main Road opposite to Sardonic's Drive. The church has branches in Antigua, Tobago, Faisabad, Chagonas, Sangre Grande, and our newest branch in Rio Claro. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Apostle Gemma this morning will be dealing with the benefits of being grateful, the attitude of a grateful person, of being thankful. Remember, in all things we must give thanks. Today, call a friend. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the teaching. A very good morning to you. Welcome to us, Pastor Gemma. I'm happy that you took the time to be with me this morning. And uh, today we're continuing on this very important topic of uh, gratitude, the rewards uh, or the benefits of being thankful. Uh, so many times we concentrate on what we don't have. And my eldest child reminded me one day by a blog that he wrote that we have to stop paying so much attention on what we don't have and beginning to be thankful to God what we do have. And usually, when we start to count, as you people see, your blessings, name them one by one, wow, you'll be amazed at how good God is to us. So, um, just here to encourage you, be a grateful person. And thankfulness is God's word, but thankfulness must also go towards other people. Be grateful. And uh, it starts in the home. Uh, thank your husband for simple things. And I know I, I used to have this philosophy that, I mean, I'm married to Vivian. This is our 43rd year we're going into. And I figure, I mean, if he does something for me, by then I feel I earned <laughs> the right to be treated in this manner. And uh, then uh, it took me quite a while to realize that I should be thankful that he would choose to do something like that for me. So now, if he drives me to the hairdresser, I have a car, he does not have to drive me, I can drive, and he chooses, you know, I will take you there, and I'm grateful, and I'll say, you know, thanks, you know, thank you for doing that. And so now, I mean, it's always like, he looks at me like, you know, if we go for a meal, I'll say thanks for the food and good company. Uh, <laughs> he has this look, you know, on his face, because it took me a while to understand that these little things that we take for granted, especially in our spouses, um, other people don't get it. So husbands, you can thank her for the, the food, the meal. All right, she's expected to cook. That's the kind of arrangement that you have. And it's every day she makes three meals. But um, have you ever had the opportunity to exchange places with her? I remember this pastor wrote a book or uh, an article on that. His wife was an immaculate stay-at-home wife, and they had children, two or three, four, how many children, and he never came home and the house was not perfect. He never came home and a meal was not cooked. And uh, he could not understand why she was tired because there was nothing to do. In his mind, <laughs> every time he came, everything was perfect until she had to do major surgery. And he had to take some time off from pastoring you know, and share his, the things that he had to do with the junior pastor 
and take care of the home and the children. And he said it nearly drove him crazy. Every time you put on clothes on a toddler, like trying to get ready for church, and you turn to take care of the next little one, when you come back, he undress. Or he wants to go to the bathroom. <laughs> or he already went to the bathroom fully clothed. <laughs> You know, I mean, you just clean the kitchen, you give him one cup of milk and they spill it. And uh, then it was when he realized how much his wife did, although she was the proverbial stay-at-home wife. And uh, from then on, he became a very grateful man. Perhaps that God made him male in the first place. <laughs> and then that he had a wife who did so much and made it look like she didn't do that much. So we need to start home. What about thanking your children? You have an obedient child. You know, we need to really say to that child, I really appreciate the fact that you are obedient. Or oh, I really appreciate the fact that you are helpful. Because some children are helpful little children. And they do things. And start by telling your little child, thank you. I remember Donnell was like three years old, the first son, when I became pregnant with Dion. And one day he came to me and he said, Mommy, when Daddy um, is not here, I will take care of you. He's three years old. And from the time he would hear me in the bathroom, like vomiting, that little boy will go and get some water and come, oh, you want some water, Mommy? And he would bring that water already, he's three. And from that time, you have to start saying, thank you. Because we take our children for granted. We expect them to tell us thanks, but how often do we say thanks? Um, I may have spoken about that already. One Mother's Day, I chose to make personalized cards and send it to every one of my children, thanking them. Because the only time I cried was for joy and for pride. Didn't make me shed a tear. No police ever knocked on my door. And according to the old people, no mother brought her daughter to say any one of my sons made her pregnant. And then it dawned on me that I really needed to say to them, thank you. We invested a lot of time and money into them, and they made full use of our investment into their lives. And for that, we say thank you. So join me and become somebody <laughs> who will say thanks. You're on the job, say thanks. You know, a, a nice little thing like a card. My second son, he had a second son, and uh, the boss was nice to him because of the kind of time and he got he was allowed to work from home and take a little extra time off and thing and i said to him you need to get him a gift card for he and his wife to go to some upscale place for dinner or something like that with a thank you card now your boss does something he bends over backwards to give you this little extra time because daughter's sick your wife's sick or something like that and we just take it for granted no you need to tell that man thank you so uh, we are going to um, become people who learn to be grateful. And we are in the Christmas season, and well, wow. Then we have a lot of reasons to give God thanks. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Um, I know that uh, there is a lot of argument, and uh, some people are justified that Jesus Christ was not born on Christmas Day. and. Um, to me, based on the information in the Bible, it seems very logical that that is true, that he was not born on December 25th. However, he was born. And so we need to thank God that he sent his son to die for us. And for me personally, he didn't remain a baby. He grew up to be a man and went on a cross and died and brought salvation to me. And salvation for me is much more than a religious experience. And for you to understand what salvation means to an individual, you really have to have a conversation with them, for them to trace their life story, to tell you what it is uh, it was like before Christ, B.C., and then after Christ, A.D. And that is not just uh, uh, dates on our calendar, but I'm talking about people's lives, and I'm telling you that my B.C. and my A.D., you know, a, a whole world apart, because when Jesus encountered me as a teenager, I was really messed up. Didn't have a sense of self-worth, um, didn't think that I was lovely, and I obviously am, I can't even say was. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, didn't think there was anything good about me, 
the same voice that I'm using to talk to you now, I had a major problem with the voice. I had it from since I was a little child. And some people um, ask, is this something, as if something's wrong with my voice? Nothing is wrong with my voice. I grew up with this. It's normal for me. And uh, Jesus came into my life. And I keep saying the words of the Bible transformed me, not just the church. Because he said to me, you are wonderfully and beautifully made. And I said, but wait, so who is God talking to when he, in the Bible? Everybody, anybody who reads and would appreciate what the word said, I say, so I'm beautiful, I'm wonderful. In Psalm, David talks about God um, taking time to make us intricately so that, uh, you know, you're a designer original. It didn't just happen. Uh, God brought you into the earth and that began to revolutionize my thinking. And then I realized that uh, Jeremiah, and he says, I have a plan for you. I say, wow. So you mapped out a plan. There's a script, a particular script, a pathway that God would have set for my life. If I discover that, pursue it and fulfill it, I would live a happy life. I would live, um, and, and well, happy, uh, joyful is a better word because um, we in church know that happy means response to happenings. But joy is something that runs deeper inside of you. Joy is a gift of the Spirit that He gives you. And despite of what is happening around us, uh, we can be joyful. And so, not just Christmas, but Christmas makes us feel a little more appreciative of Jesus Christ. He changed my life. Salvation for me is not church attendance. Salvation for me and for all of us who claim salvation, it really is not becoming a member of a religious group. It is not switching from one religion to another. It is encountering God and God making sense of a life that was totally messed up. I mean, he, he literally takes broken pieces and makes new vessels out of us. When God is done with you, nobody could know that you were ever broken. And I mean, sometimes um, most of us, We'll be amused because people are envious of us. <laughs> they look at you and, uh, you know, after Christ and they, they envy you and they didn't know your story. And many people want to be like you. And I often tell people, if you want to be like me now, then you have to have had the experiences I had to become this. And that's everybody's experience. When you see somebody, listen, there's a story behind where you know, what they had to go through to become what they are today. So Christmas is an exceptional time where you must be grateful. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Thank him for, um, you know, bringing second Adam. Adam messed up by going against God's rules and uh, what God told them, the commands that he gave them in the Garden of Eden. And Jesus Christ came as second Adam. Although Vivian likes to say he was really the first Adam. He was here all the time to change our lives. This is a great time to say thanks. Thank God. And uh, you may have had the wrong impression of what you consider a religious experience. It's really not that. It's really an experience with God, an encounter that literally changes your life forever. And that is why um, people think in church, they see us as fanatic. Hey, this is like the air breed. <laughs> we sing these songs and you know, like you are the air breed. Oh yeah, he is. That is the reason for my existence. That is why I wake up in the morning. And if I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, there are some mornings I ain't getting up. <laughs> you stay under the covers, you cover your head and you tell yourself, I'm not going anywhere today. And there are some people, and that is where people get so depressed that they don't come out of their bed. And I remember this sister was talking about her aunt lost her mother. And after the funeral, she went into her bed and she died in that same bed. She became so depressed, she never got off that bed. They had to take care of her right there. I don't know. I mean, the crippling began in her emotions. And then because she refused to live, and she remained and followed her mother to the grave. And many of us have such stories where when we encountered Christ, we were crippled emotionally, <laughs> in every sense of the way. And then he comes now and he makes us whole. And we have become people with sense of a future, with sense of destiny, uh, with sense of worth. And after having lived where everybody treated you as if you were nothing, and then Jesus Christ says, um, there's a treasure in this earthen vessel. 
And what makes me valuable is the Christ in me. The Bible says Christ in you, the hope of glory. That treasure is what gives me worth and value. It doesn't matter uh, where I was born. It doesn't matter um, my upbringing, my parentage, the geography. I mean, you name it, my educational levels, my skill set. But that Christ inside of me and the Christ that it may be in you, or if not, it's an easy process. I tell people all you have to say in your own words, Jesus Christ, take over the management of my life. It really takes that. God, take over the management of my life. Jesus, I, I ask you to come into my life and take over. Jesus, I give you my past, my present, my future. Listen, however you want to say it, because God <laughs> understands your heart's language and cry much more than the words that we speak. Because sometimes when we speak, our words are inadequate to express what we really feel. We're still talking about gratitude. We're still talking about the benefits of gratitude. And I'm saying this is a season where give God praise for Jesus Christ. But then how do some of us give God praise? By doing everything else and forgetting God. And I find that amazing. So how is painting my house giving God praise? Should you paint your house? Absolutely, the house needs painting. Or if you feel to paint it, that's fine. But some people paint the house and they can't attend church. And I'm celebrating Christmas by giving God praise. Come on. Come on. How it's been excessive in my spending. Giving God praise. Living far above my means. And I, I learned from my children. Again, Donnell has this philosophy. Always live below your means. Don't live according to your means. Don't live above it. Live below. And that's how you survive. Because every time I live below my means, it means I have a little extra to put away for the rainy day. And even when you are blessed and you start to come into better means, continue to live below your means. You don't have to change your lifestyle because you get more money. You could live relatively simple and put aside it. And that's why a lot of people in, in Trinidad and Tobago, all over the world, in trouble today. You work for all these years, suddenly there's some downsizing and retrenchment. You work for so much money, but you lived above your means. And many people become suicidal. They don't want to live. What am I going to do? And especially when you live beyond your means, uh, you lose, some people lose everything. Because everything is a hook. <laughs> everything is a credit card. And, you know, imagine we live like that and be still not thankful. Like the more you get, the more you want. The more you have, the more you want. And we forget to get up a day and say, Lord, I thank you. Because you give me the skills. You give me what I like to call the smarts. You give me the intellect. You give me the energy. Come on. He give you the air you breathe. Listen, uh, as long as you're not breathing oxygen in a tank, every other oxygen you're breathing, and I am breathing, God give me. He's the creator. <laughs> we walk around and we take so much for granted. And I say to people, you know, life teaches you so many valuable lessons. And I, I learn to be thankful. Because things that we take for granted uh, and we never say thanks for. And a time will come when we have to say thanks. And I came out of a, a, a little situation and I was talking to some sisters at home. Generally, um, when I would go exercising, we live in a hilly place and I love climbing the hills. Beautiful, I get up early in the morning and the trainers with me and we go up the hill and we walk and I would walk down to from where we are to the boardwalk and it's at nice. And then you come to a place where you can't even walk. <laughs> out in your yard. And I came to a place where I would walk. The first time I went out in the yard, I wept. Because you could barely walk in the house. And, it, and then I, I realized, I never thanked God when I woke up that hill. I never thanked God when I got up in the morning and walked around. I didn't thank him that I had feet to walk and I was able to do it. Because you just took it for granted until the day that perhaps Something is wrong and you, 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 a limb is affected. Some of us, when they say praise God, you're praising them at half mask until something wrong with the arm. It becomes a or something. 
and you're really calm with it. And then you realize, wow, I took my arms for granted. And so I know you understand what I'm telling you because life teaches us by our various uh, experiences to be grateful. This is a great time to start. Give God praise for sending Jesus Christ. And then begin to thank God for everything. Remember when I started the program, the Bible says in everything, give him thanks. For it's the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. He really wants us to be people who are grateful. Join with me and say, Lord, I thank you. Do ever let a day pass and you open those two eyes. And when you open your eye, you're seeing. Tell him thanks. When you roll off the bed in, on your own volition, and I put my two feet down, I say, okay, all right, thank you, Jesus. Then the next thing, I'm standing. So I stand up for a while. I say, hey, yeah, thank you, Jesus. Then I go to the bathroom and I'm functioning normally. And I say, ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> what allowed me to be so grateful? Circumstances, experiences, physical setbacks at times, and things that we take for granted. Suddenly you become a grateful person. I am trying to tell you today, don't wait until you lose something to be grateful. Do it until you lose someone to express gratitude. The worst pain is you have a loved one in your life and you didn't really appreciate them. And then you lose that person. And for the first time you realize the quality of the loss. And you look back and say, I wish I had the chance to tell my mother thanks. Because, uh, you know, when we appreciate parents, when we become parents ourselves, and you say, my God, that's what my mother had to do, especially if she was a single parent. And sometimes you have, you and your wife or you and your husband, and both of you struggling to, to take care of your children. And you realize that mommy did that all by herself. And if she's not around, because usually, when that aha moment comes, we will pick up the phone, or when next we see her, say, you know, I really appreciate you. I understand now what it felt like. Don't wait until mommy is in the coffin, in a grave. Don't wait until the people around you, you know, you, have, you, know, you buy flowers to put on a coffin. Oh, the coffin looks good. Uh, the grave side looks pretty. But it would have been much nicer for you to say, thank you, this Christmas season, Say thanks to everybody possible. And say thanks for everything possible. Tell God thanks for a good day. When it's raining, tell him thanks for the rain. <laughs> you know, thank God for Trinidad and Tobago. We, we are people who don't appreciate our country. And until you go somewhere else and experience other places, then we have fresh appreciation for Trinidad and Tobago. You know, how many times you see people with a flag, a Trinidad and Tobago flag flying in the car, driving in Trinidad and Tobago. But if you go to New York or Canada or Europe or anywhere, you know it's a Trini because you drive the pass on the highway <laughs> and there's a Trini flag flying somewhere inside that car or some bumper sticker or something. So start by giving God praise. And uh, leave the house alone this Christmas. Go to church. Find a place of worship and join with the saints to say, thank you, God, for just being God. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, the songwriter says, for dying. Thank you, Spirit, for leading me to Christ. Because the Bible says that no man comes to the Father except the Holy Spirit leads him. And then when we are done with that, Look around to the people who are there that God will put in your life, especially some of us don't have it in our fa blood family, but he puts us in a church family, a church community, and there are people there who have become your support system. Perhaps we could take two minutes or so to tell somebody who, who's been kinder to you in church or in the neighborhood. Sometimes your neighbor will glance at your house while you're gone or something like that. You know, stop a while, maybe buy a card, surprise the neighbor and just say thank you, because I know every time I step out, you would glance over at my home. Today, I wish you would listen, and not listen, 
But Jane says, uh, he prefers that we are doers of the word and not hearers only. That we all become people who are grateful. The next time we meet, we're going to talk about the benefits of being grateful. And there are lots of benefits. God bless you real good. Oh Lord, be a guide till we see the sun. Gifts we bring, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. For the King has come to the earth below. Suddenly, Emmanuel, lead by light these three. Have you ever said to yourself, I really wish I can understand the Bible better? I want to communicate with God better. I want to be able to share my faith with others. Have you ever said, I'm reading the Bible, but I do not really understand it? Well, if you have ever said any of those things, I have really good news for you. My name is Gemma Duncan. My husband and I are Pastor Vivian Duncan are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center. And we have what we call School of the Bible. We've started since 2014, and I'm gonna give you a little rundown as to what School of the Bible is about and how we can facilitate you in fulfilling the needs that you have expressed. School of the Bible is a one-year course that runs from January to December. Every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we have four all-day quarterly sessions, one Saturday every three months. Inclusive in all of this, we have movies. Uh, our main course material is the Bible. The Bible is the one and only resource book that you have to have. There are other resource materials that we will have on offer that you could choose to get or not get. If you choose, then you have to order those materials. But other than that, there are seven manuals that we use. And these seven manuals, you'll be going to see them on the screen, and I'll give you a little rundown as to what they are. The first manual, manual number one, is the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Manual number two contains the historical books from Joshua to Esther. Manual number three, the books of a poetry from Job to Song, of Solomon. Manual number four are the books of prophecy. And the books of prophecy, they are divided into two sections, major prophets from Isaiah to Daniel and the minor prophets from Hosea to Malachi. Now when you come to the school, we'll talk about why they are considered major and minor. Uh, manual number five, the New Testament books now. The books of history, the four gospels from Matthew to John. Manual number six are what we call the Pauline epistles. The epistles written by Apostle Paul from Romans to Philemon. And then manual number seven are the general epistles and they have a variety of authors and the book of Revelation. Uh, the one prophetic book in the New Testament. The manuals are simply written and user friendly. They are easy to use and you can use them as a tool for study in the future. This program is designed to meet your need to simply understand the Bible better. The Bible is the only test, as I said. Other resources are optional and are available on request. Ask for a brochure at 633-3780. And you'll see the number scrolling across the, the screen. The brochure will contain all the information that you may need. We are now open for registration. Thank you for viewing us, Pastor Gemma. I'm sure you enjoyed Apostle Gemma sharing how positive it is to be grateful, to give thanks for everything that God has provided for us. See you next time.